Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to Agape International Ministries. Amen. On behalf of our pastors, Lucius and Donna McDowell, we welcome all of you who are present in the house of God today. Those watching by Facebook and YouTube, we are located at 4040 Jonesboro Road, Hampton, Georgia. And the doors of our church are open. We would love for you to come and worship with us. Praise the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, not sad, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. This weekend is Memorial Day weekend, and Monday is Memorial Day as we um, recognize it. We do remember and honor all military members who died while serving uh, the U.S. forces fighting in the nation's war. So we thank God for their service and bravery as we commemorate this weekend. Amen. Amen. This morning, we will also cover in prayer the two tragedies that happened on separate ends of the country in Uvalde, Texas, for the families, friends, and communities there that are mourning the loss and the lives of 19 children and two teachers who were simply going to school and going to work. And we pray and cover Buffalo, New York, for the lives of the 10 members of the black community who were simply going to the grocery store. And even this morning, there were six injured in Tennessee in a shooting, and enough is enough. All of these shootings are happening within weeks of each other. So we're going to come against that in prayer this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. For we know the enemy is a defeated foe. We need the help of heaven itself. And when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. Amen? We look unto the hills from which cometh our help. For our help coming from the Lord. Hallelujah. So we know the prayers of the righteous availeth much, and we're going to go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Amen. May feel free to pray in your heavenly language, English, but we're going to bombard heaven. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, hallowing your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Father, we bless your holy name this morning. We give you all the glory. We worship you, God. We came to participate in prayer this morning in the name of Jesus. For Father, you are the only one that can move things out of the way in the name of Jesus. So God, we come in confidence knowing that you will hear us and you will help in the name of Jesus. Father God, we come boldly to the throne of grace this morning that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Father God, we ask you first and foremost to forgive us of all of our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquities. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. We repent this morning and we ask you to forgive us in the name of Jesus. We believe your word and receive our forgiveness now in Jesus' name. Lord God, we also forgive those who have trespassed against us, Lord God. Thank you for making us the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Father, we ask you, God, to heal our land in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray for the president, vice president, every elected and appointed official. We pray for the wisdom of God to prevail and that only the righteous dwell in positions of authority in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray that, the, that only godly and righteous laws are passed and that the wicked and treacherous are rooted out in the name of Jesus. We thank you for vetoing and reversing all unrighteous laws in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask you to bless this nation because you are Lord. We still say Jesus is Lord in the name of Jesus over these United States. Hallelujah. Lord God, we also pray for Ukraine this morning, God that the conflict with Russia would come to an end in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we know that your will will be done, and we thank you, God, for the victory in this situation and circumstance in the name of Jesus. Father God, you said whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Father God, you have given us the keys to the kingdom in the name of Jesus, and we come this morning, God, using our keys this morning in prayer 
there. Hallelujah. Father God, we bind up gun violence. We bind up mass shootings of any type. We bind up violent extremism in the name of Jesus. We bind up attacks against people of color and communities of color in the name of Jesus. We bind up all motivating factors that lead to these shootings. Self-hatred, hopelessness, despair, anger in Jesus' name. We bind up mental illness. We bind up suicidal ideations in the name of Jesus. We bind up the public performances of the devil in the name of Jesus. We loose gun control laws. We lose laws that will stop guns from getting in the wrong hands. We lose the peace of God. We lose the healing of God. We lose the wholeness of God this morning. We lose the love of God this morning. We lose unity this morning in the name of Jesus. We lose hope this morning, God, and we will keep hope alive in the name of Jesus. We lose, Lord God, your perfect will being done, your good, acceptable, perfect will, God. We loose it this morning in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for your covering this morning, God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run in, and they are safe. We plead the precious blood of Jesus over the children all over the world. We plead the blood of Jesus over the body of Christ. We plead the blood of Jesus over our church. We plead the blood of Jesus over our pastors, over our families, over our children, over our jobs. We plead the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for Psalms 91, the canopy of protection. Lord God, we thank you that you said in your word that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be our shield and buckler. We shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh us. Only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked because we have made the Lord who is our refuge even the most high our habitation there shall no evil befall us neither shall any plague come nigh our dwelling but he shall give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways Lord God we thank you that they will bear us up in their hands lest we dash our foot against the stone we shall tread upon the lion and the adder the young lion and the dragon shall we trample under feet and then the Lord Lord says, we thank you, God, that you said because we set ourselves upon you, God, our love upon you, God, that you will deliver us. You will set us on high because we have known your name. We shall call upon you in the day of trouble. You will answer us. You will deliver us. You will honor us. With long life, you will satisfy us and show us your salvation. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you this morning for your safety, for your protection, for delivering us from accidents, diseases, dangers, evil influences. In the name of Jesus, Father God, continue to order our steps. In the name of Jesus, oh God, let us still heed the still small voice of your precious Holy Spirit. Father God, continue to be our rock, our salvation, our defense, our deliverer. We shall not be moved. The wicked will not remain in the land, and the righteous shall not be moved. In the name of Jesus, Father God, help us to keep our eyes stayed on you, for you will keep us in perfect peace. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we fix our hearts on your word. We will not fear evil tidings in the name of Jesus. We will trust in you, God, with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. Lord God, we pray for all of those 
that are mourning the loss of their children this morning, God. The teachers, the, the wives this morning, God. Those mourning the loss of the precious lives in Buffalo, New York, God. We pray even for the loss of life that happened in the Asian community in California, God. We pray that you would comfort them in the name of Jesus. All that mourn, oh God. Father, we pray for the bereaved wherever they may be, oh God. Meet them this morning, God. Touch them, Lord God. Wrap them in your arms this morning, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let them know that it's gonna be all right. In the the name of Jesus God fill their hearts with your love oh God in the name of Jesus Lord God you said you heal the broken and hearted and bind up their wounds God we thank you for healing their broken hearts this morning oh God in the name of Jesus thank you God that you sent your word and healed them and delivered them from even this destruction in the name of Jesus we still give you the glory and even though we don't know everything we know that you know all things and you still do all things well so we still give you the glory this morning, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that you, Lord of the harvest, would send forth laborers into your harvest, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the unsaved this morning, the lost, oh God, through your tender mercies and your unfailing love, God, you will provide a way for sinners to be reconciled back to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, it's your desire that all men be saved and understand the truth. We know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only gate by which people can be saved. Lord God, help us share the gospel. Help us share the gospel with everyone we come into contact with, Lord. Help us share the good news of Jesus Christ with boldness, confidence, and love. In the name of Jesus, we pray for salvation, God, and we trust you for saving, oh God. In the name of Jesus, as the body of Christ, we gladly take on the great commission and go into the world preaching the gospel, the good news to everyone. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you for being our great shepherd, our chief shepherd, our bright and morning star, our lily in the valley, our rear reward, our redeemer, our deliverer, our healer our sanctifier, our justifier, our way maker, our light in the darkness. You are all that, oh God, and we bless your holy name this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you for rebuilding the church, restoring biblical values, and reviving the people in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the angels of this house, pastors Lucius and Donna McDowell. Father, thank you for blessing and keeping our pastors, letting your face shine upon them, oh God. Refresh them in your presence, oh God. Give them more wisdom. Give them more revelation in the name of Jesus. Fill them with your joy, peace, and love in the name of Jesus. Cover their children, Zoe and Victoria, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that no weapon formed against our pastor, their children, or their family shall ever, ever prosper. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for the unity in this house. Your word says, how, behold, how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. Father, we pray against any misunderstandings, division, miscommunications, and discord, and we lose unity, communication, understanding, and agreement. In the name of Jesus, we stay free of offenses. We overcome offenses no matter matter what. We forgive anybody for anything, no matter what, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you that we've been called to reach the loss, mature the body, and spread the love of Jesus Christ. We claim souls for the kingdom of God through prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus, thank you for healing the sick. Thank you for setting the captives free. Thank you, God but doing exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we even lift up our construction projects this morning to you this morning, God. Thank you for the finishing of the sanctuary, the finishing of the fellowship hall, the finish of the storage building in the name of Jesus. We call it a done deal and a finished work in the name of Jesus. We lift up this service before you, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over this service. We thank you for the anointing. It rests, rule, and abides in this house in the name of Jesus. Thank you for chains being broken this morning, God. Thank you for transformation. Thank you that people are excited and delighted to be in the house of God, that they are enthusiastic about what you're doing, what you're going to do, and what you've already done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah. We stir ourselves up this morning. We're not a dead church. We're a living church. Hallelujah. And your praise shall continually be in our mouths. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we believe we receive that in the name of Jesus. We don't know what that came to do, but we came to raise our hands. We came to stomp our feet. We came to give you the glory this morning, oh God. For you are worthy to be praised. There is none like you in all the earth. Hallelujah. And we praise you, God. We magnify you, and we thank you for the word that's going forth this morning. As we usher in your presence through praise and worship, we give you glory now. In Jesus' name, amen.
incredible, amazing, supernatural. He's wonderful. He's marvelous. He is. He is almighty. He's credible, amazing, supernatural. He's wonderful. He's marvelous.
great I am. You are the only true and living God. You are the great I am. I wish I had somebody that would declare with me this morning that our God is the great I am. That our God is the only true and living God. We bless your name, Jesus. We worship you this morning. <laughs> For you, oh God, are loving. You alone are worthy, God. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor, God. Great is your faithfulness unto us, oh God. Day after day after day after day. Faithful are you, God. Hallelujah, God, we worship you. We worship you. Holy are you, God. Holy, 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 holy are you, God. We lift our hands and worship. We lift our hands and worship you, God. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We bless you, God. We bless your name. We bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name, we bless your name, God. Oh, we bless your name, God. We bless your name, we bless your name, God. Glory, glory to you. Who we worship. Who we worship you. Even when we don't understand, God, we worship you. Because we found you to be true. We found you to be true. You're true to your word. That you will never leave us. That you will never forsake us. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Around the throne. I hear the elders. I hear the elders sing at the feet. At the feet of the king is constant offering. It's constant offering around the throne. Around the throne of the Lord. I hear the elders. I hear the elders sing at the feet. The At the feet of the king is constant offering, constant offering around the throne, of the around Lord. the throne of the Lord. They never cease, they never cease to see. At the feet of the king, At the feet of the king, there's a common thing. There's a common thing. They cry.
up your hearts to the only king and the wise God yeah come on we bless your name oh God we glorify your name oh God come on put it in the atmosphere we bless your name oh God we glorify your name oh God put it in the atmosphere we bless your name oh God and we all your name oh God and we honor your name oh God we bless your name oh God and we honor you. come on put it out there in the atmosphere we bless your name oh God and we honor your name oh God we bless your name oh God and we honor you oh God we bless your name Let's 
bless him, bless him, bless him. We bless you. We bless you. Come on, let's fill this place. Let the glory of the Lord flow in this place. Open up your mouth this morning. Experience the presence of God in this place. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. How do you bless the Lord? Open up your mouth. Lift up your hands. Glorify him right now. Say it all the We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you. Okay, come on. We're doing this all together. We're doing this all together. Everybody in the building, if you got breath in your body, open up your mouth and give God the very best that you have. Hallelujah. Let's try one more time. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, oh God. We honor you, oh God. We give you all the praise. Give it to him, give it to him, give it to him. Hey. Glory to God. We glorify your name, oh God. Is he worthy this morning? He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, come on. He's worthy. Yes, he is. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Worthy all the glory. He's He's worthy of the honor. We bless the Lord to say he's worthy. He's worthy. Glory to your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Oh, come on, lift up those hands. Hallelujah. Come on, let's magnify the Lord. Make him bigger than your circumstance and your situation that you're dealing with right now. He's bigger than any financial issue right now. He's bigger than any relational issue right now. Only God can do this. But you must magnify him. You must glorify him this morning. Hey! We magnify him. We magnify him. We magnify him. We make you bigger yet. We make you bigger. We make you bigger, yeah. We magnify it. We glorify it. Hallelujah. Woo. So God, we bless your name right now. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honors. And we come before you, Lord God, just as yielded vessels today, Father, as we're ready to divide your word to your people, Lord God. We bless you right now for what you're going to do, how you're going to do it right now. We say right now that as I minister to your sheep, Lord God, I decrease that you'll increase, oh God, and you'll get all the glory, you'll get all the honor. We just come before you, Lord God, because we know that you are our God and you have all the answers that are pivotal to our life on this day. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Do you sense Jesus in this place this morning? Is Jesus in the room today? Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. So you say if Jesus is in the room, then you ought to be really like acting like Jesus is really in the room. 
Y'all too quiet for Jesus to be in the room. Come on, I say, if Jesus was in the room, shoot. I'd be like, hey, I'm here and he's here too. Glory to God. Somebody shout, Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. Hey! Glory to your name, oh God. Hey! Jesus is in the house. Hey! Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the room, yeah. Jesus is in the room. Say, Jesus is in the house. Come on. Jesus is in the house. I can feel him in this place. He's all over everybody's face. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the room. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Glory to God. If you got your Bibles, turn right quickly to Psalms number 119. Hallelujah. Psalms number 119. It's good to give God glory, honor, and praise. He is worthy of it all. I say he's worthy of it all. He is worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, I believe that the Lord is going to bless you with this word. Amen. We started a, a new series of teaching on overcoming offense. And amen. I'm some music to kind of fire everybody up to receive this word. Amen. Because it's going deeper and deeper and deeper. And it causes us to look at ourselves to make sure that we are not walking in offense. Because there is too many opportunities for us to be offended. Amen. That's a good word. Amen. Everybody have to deal with this issue concerning offense. We've been talking about if you're going to walk this out, if you're going to do uh, the things that God is requiring for us to do, then there's some things that must be done. I told you to go to uh, Psalms number 119, but jump right quickly to Jeremiah. Amen. So we can go back and get that foundation. God gave us a word back in uh, last year that we were to uh, rebuild the church. I got a little ringing here, a little ringing going on. I'm going to talk just a little bit. This is not my the first chapter. We're going to go there first. Hallelujah. Then we go back to Psalms. Amen. 119. Jeremiah, the first chapter, starting with verse number, number four. And then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet. Unto the nations, ordain a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, O oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. This is Jeremiah speaking here. But he says, But the Lord said unto him, said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And he goes on in verse number eight, he says, be not afraid of their faces. I want you to underline their faces because sometimes faces can be intimidating. Amen. Glory to God. And many times that we seem to have assignments and we always kind of look for affirmation. But there are times when people look strange at you, it's like, did I do something wrong? You very well may not have done anything wrong. You might have been doing the exact thing that God was telling you to do. But your, 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 uh, your, your, your attention should not lie in, in, in what goes on on other people's face, but it should go on what God has instructed for you to do. Amen. 
So he goes on and he says, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So that means that sometime you will have to move forward in doing those things that God is telling you to do. And as he's telling you to do, you can't be consumed with what people think or say or how they look. Because when you have an assignment from God, it's on you to carry out that assignment. Amen. Goes, he goes on and says, he says, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I put my words in thy mouth. So he put the words in his mouth. And I really believe that God has put the words in our mouth to get them in our hearts. Amen. So that we can grow as strong kingdom citizens of this kingdom, that we can represent him in the earth. How many strong citizens do I have out there this morning? How many got the word of God in your heart? We're going to see. Amen. Amen. So he goes on and says, see, I have this day set thee over the nations. In other words, you can see authority there. He says, and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down. A guest drummer this morning, he's sitting there waiting, amen. He's like, okay, pastor, have you released me? Yes, amen. They left you up here, amen, so it's all good. <laughs> So we have these assignments, and in these assignments, we have to make sure that we are always walking them out to do exactly what God is telling us to do. And as we are given assignments, how many of you know that the enemy knows your assignment? And he would do everything in his power to get you off of the will of God concerning your assignment. And many times uh, in our walk, you know, we end up sometimes get offended based on what other people have done or said or some things that, you know, that you thought maybe not should not ever never happen. But God wants us to come to this place that we overcome all of our offenses, but we have to go back and judge where we are. Because if you don't see yourself in this picture, something is not good. Because every person has experienced some sense of offense. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I preach the word on something, guess what? The enemy is going to highlight it to the point that you've got to walk in love regardless. You know, the scripture teaches us that, you know, we owe no man nothing but to love them. But even when you talk about those things, you have a reason sometimes that you want to knock them out based on some things that they may be doing to you. I mean, I know everybody is all sanctified and all holy and filled with the love of God. Only Pastor McDowell struggles with those issues. But everybody else is okay. <clears throat> but I praise God this morning that even as we begin to look at this, we got to go back and look at the fact that we have been given authority. And because we've been given authority, we have the power over the enemy. I said we have the power over the enemy. But you got to learn how to exercise and recognize when the enemy is trying to get you off. Amen. You got to recognize when the enemy is using others when they don't even recognize that they're being used. Sometimes people will say stuff and do some things and not even think about it and keep moving their way. But it takes you somewhere. Only make Pastor McDowell have to deal with those issues. I know you never have those problems. There are some time when, you know, people might say something. They may not even say things. They may look at you in a way that it doesn't feel good. Anybody ever had one of those body posture look that feels like they're looking straight through you like, who do you think you are? And if you're not careful, the first thing you're thinking is, what did I do for such a, a, a transaction of non-love to be given to me? And the first thing before you know it, if you're not careful, you don't guard your heart, you'll get over to a place of having an issue with the person that you encountered. Amen. Amen. So let's look at the word of God because I know that this word is definitely going to be a blessing to help you this morning. Amen. So Psalms number 119, stanza 165. When you get there, say, I am there. Amen. Come on. I heard two people. Amen. You brought your Bibles. Amen. Come on. Just say it. Amen. So the King James Version, it reads, great peace have they which love thy law. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Wow. Nothing shall offend them. Now, I want to make sure that you get this because, uh, you know, the word law in this verse means the word, of course. And the next part of the verse is awesome because it clearly states that nothing shall offend them. Is that you this morning? Is that you this morning that you got word in you so strongly that you got the peace of God that nothing bothers you? 
Oh, yeah, we were just shouting this morning. Where you at, church? Come on, where are you? Huh? The word says, great peace have they which love thy law, which means you'll have great peace if you, what? If you get the word of God in you and you learn how to love on this word and allow the word to get inside of your spirit. A problem is that we say we love God, but many times we don't get the word on the inside of our hearts. Amen. So that means that we have to come back to the place of always making sure every day we have the deposit of the word of God on the inside of us. Why? Because the heart can be evil sometimes. And sometimes the heart can cause you to say or do some things that you have no business doing. But you have to make sure that you have the word of God that will corral your actions. And if you love the word, you'll get to that place where you'll begin to grow strongly in it so that every time when something try to enter in, it would not cause you to react or walk out on those suggestive thoughts. Somebody shout, I have the word in my heart, and I will not sin against it. Let's look at the, I want to give you a couple of translations here. The Living Bible says, those who love the laws have great peace of heart and mind and do not stumble. They do not stumble. The NIV says, great peace have those who love your law and nothing can make them stumble. Nothing can make them stumble. Now, the Amplified, the classic edition says, great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall offend them or make them stumble. And I want you to get to this place of asking yourself, am I offended? Have I been offended? And who have I offended? Because many times we can always say that people offend us, but we don't understand, we don't understand ourselves in, under, in, in knowing that there are many times we trigger things in other people just as well. So that means that you got to look deeply on the inside and make sure that you know that you are judging you. Let a man so examine himself so he won't be judged publicly. God always give us these opportunities. Are y'all with me this morning? Come on, say hallelujah, something, amen. Y'all have got real quiet. I can do in order that you keep your love walk alive. Now, going back to Psalms number 119, it says, What great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall what? It shall offend them. Now, there are two promises here for the believer. The first one is, uh, is the one for the believer who loves the word. How many believers love the word this morning? Yeah. Amen. So I, I, I'm saying this because I want you to become a love of the word so much that you need to come to church on Sundays to get it. But you're doing something to get it inside of you every day because you need the word in you every day to feed your spirit. Amen. And to address the issues of your heart. I said to feed your spirit and to what? To address the issues of your heart. Now, um, here it, it says that peace is translated shalom, meaning nothing missing and nothing broken. This is a covenant that we have with as a born-again believer, and we have the covenant of peace. So that means that every person, every born-again believer should be operating in the covenant of peace. And because you should be operating in the covenant of peace, that means that you should be guarding your heart, that even if something try to come against you, you can understand that you got to do some things to correct that. Are y'all with me? Now, because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we now have been restored unto wholeness. There was a co covenant of peace of, on the children of Israel when they had nothing missing and nothing broken in their lives. It was the will of God that that same covenant is activated on us today. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Wholeness. Oh, my God, it's something awesome. It's almost like well, to have nothing missing and nothing broken. That means that I have all of the pieces that I need to succeed while I am in the earth. Now, just because you have nothing missing, nothing broken, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have any bouts with the enemy. Because it is his job to get you to a place that, you know what, that you miss God and you begin to respond the way he wants you to respond. I want to answer this question this morning. Have you made the word of God first priority in your life? 
Because I do notice that, you know, you can spend hours watching TV. You can spend hours listening to music. You can spend hours doing all of the things that you want to do. But the word of God sometimes becomes the last resort. I have a friend uh, who's vice president of Southern University. He was like, man, it's interesting that everything now that's going on, the church is last. The church is last. It means that everybody can do everything that they want to do, but when it comes to prioritizing the church university being strong in the earth, you know, we're not getting that. So the bottom line is now we have to understand that there are tricks of the enemy because now we have virtual viewing. And everybody might say that I'm watching you, Pastor. I'm just talking about y'all Facebook folk, YouTube folk, and a guy for your website people. You can say I'm watching, but you can be doing a multiple things in your life that you're not paying attention. And I really believe that it's got to come to the place where you begin to press your way to come into the house of God because this is a place that you don't get disturbed when you're getting the word. And if you're being robbed of the word, you become a candidate to be offended by every scenario in your life. Because you have nothing to, 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 to really be rooted in. You don't have to, nothing to, be, uh, to, to gird you up concerning the things that God is causing you to move through. If God has made a promise to you, saying that he's going to do great exploits in your life, if God says that he's going to bring you out of where you are and take you to other places, then you're going to do all these awesome things. Don't you know that when God made that announcement, he did not just make that announcement privately to you. Every demon in hell heard it. And it's their job to get you offended, to get you off track, get you out of the will of God so that you will not see the blessings of God manifest in your life. Somebody shout, I will see the blessings of God manifested in my life. Now, in the second part of this promise is, it's promising that, that nothing should offend you. Write it down on your notes. Nothing should offend me according to Psalms number 119, stanza number one, uh, number 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Because I love the word of God so much, nothing is going to offend me. And if something does offend me, I will overcome the offense because the word is in my heart. The word is in my heart. I will read the word every day. I will be exposed to hear the word because faith coming by hearing and hearing the word. I get build faith when I get the word. When I am taught the word, I grow up and be strong in God. I am not simple. I'm not so defined by the enemy because he does not have no control over me while I have the word in me. And as I activate that word, y'all hear what I'm saying? Because as a word church, we teach you how to do these things, and you got to learn how to eat that word more than you're eating food. And I don't know about you, but I have a strong appetite to eat real food. Amen. And because I have a strong appetite to eat real food, then I should become a pla- I should be at a place in my life where I'm having or building an appetite for the word of God. You miss a meal around here today. I guarantee you'll be so grouchy. You miss a meal? Come on now. You'll be in a place like, I got to get me something to eat. How many of you are saying, I got to get some scriptures in me. I got to get the word in me. I really got to get the word in me. I really need some word because right now, I'm about to lose my mind. Right now, I'm about to throw down on somebody. I got to. Nobody have to tell me when my word deficiency has gone to a bad place. Everything gets on your last nerve. Anybody there? You know, we're in the middle of a building project here. I mean, praise God. God is doing some great things. But I'm telling you, every day that I walk up into this camp, I got to be word on. I said I have to be word on. It got so bad one day I had a little, uh, little confrontation with, with one of the Hispanic workers. Boy, and, you know, he didn't speak English. And I was just, hey, you know, I'm like, hey, man, somebody need to understand what I'm saying. Get me an interpreter. And I'm I'm saying, wait a minute, why am I so wired right now? They don't understand me. The little man was just trying to do his job. And I was saying that you ain't doing it fast enough. 
Turn off my water when you ain't working water. Come on, do all this stuff. Don't track more. Hey, no, not me. I'm like, sir, get me your boss, somebody who understand what I'm saying. And then I walked in my office and God said, you know, just as you get offended, you probably offended them. Because you wanted something when you wanted it. Anybody like that sometime when you want it, when you want it? And people are not moving fast enough to give it to you? Oh, come on, y'all. And sometimes you just feel like sometimes your voice levels just need to go up just a little bit so that you can get a little extra action. But have you ever noticed sometimes when your voice go high, you, you get no action at all because people look at uh, you like, okay, excuse me, I'm right here. So we must understand, oh, look at the brothers clapping. Come on, brothers, clap. Not some of the sisters are clapping. So we must understand that, you know what, it's not all the time that people are offending us, but there's some time that we offend other people. Just look at your neighbor and say, I know you all sanctified and cool today. But everybody has some challenges sometimes. Now tell them, now ain't God all right. <laughs> everybody have challenges. But we have to learn how to work the word of God in us so that we can get our blessings. I want my blessings. I don't want to die and leave nothing in the earth because I can't take it with me. I want to live big. Come on, y'all. I want to drive big. Glory to God. I want to wear big. Glory to God. I want to, I want to do big. And that should be your mindset because that's what God has blessed us so that we can walk into those things. God don't want you living on the, the lesser side. But you got to build your faith to get to this place. Because it takes faith to say, I'm sorry. Oh, y'all thought I was going somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that means that you got to exercise your faith to ask somebody, please forgive me for how I responded. I was talking to one of the members on last Sunday. He said, Pastor, he said, man, when you was preaching on Sunday, and he said, you know, there are times I, I you know, I can go a little heavy, and I'll tell people, if I, if I offended you, I'm sorry. I said, really, is it if I offended or did you really offend? He said, I just offended him. I just said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's hard for people to repent. Let me get my notes. Amen. So, so the Greek word for offense is scandalizo. And that word means to lay a trap with the intention to maim, to hurt, and to destroy. Satan is laying traps. Satan wants to kill. He wants to destroy you. He wants you to get you to the place where you never, ever reach that place where God wants you to be. This is where our English word slander comes from. He wants to lay a trap with the intent to hurt, lay a trap with the intent to slander your reputation among men. Now, offense is defined as the act of stumbling, a cause of occasion of sin, stumbling blocks, something that outrages the moral or physical senses. And we got to understand that Satan wants us to get into a place of offense so that we will never tap into the blessings that God has for our life. How many know that you're blessed this morning? I mean, do you really see yourself blessed this morning? Now, can you believe that God has something better than what you have right now? Do you believe that God want to bring you into a wealthy place, more money than you've ever made in your life? He wants you to live bigger than you ever lived in your life. But you have to understand there are some things that you have to deal with in order for you to get those places. God wants you to move out of the place that you're in so that you does not go without a fight. And that fight is not between flesh and blood. But that fight is between the warfare of the enemy and his cohorts. They would do everything in their power to trip you up, to get you to a place where you can't move out of that place. And I want everybody to make this confession in the name of Jesus. Okay, come on, you can't play with this because when we start talking to the devil and his cohorts, they will come at you. So you got to speak with authority. Say, in the name of Jesus, I speak boldly with authority. I decree and declare right now, 
nothing shall hinder. Nothing shall paralyze. Nothing shall slow me down concerning the blessings that God has for me. I serve notice on every demon. I am a winner. So I speak to you now and I say your assignments on my life, on my household, on my family is canceled. Cancel. Now the scripture says that when kings decree a thing, it shall be established. So I'm going to give you one more opportunity. If your mask is hindering you, I want you to just take it out and just say, let me get this word in the atmosphere. It's canceled, devil. It's canceled, devil. It's canceled. Come on, get in the atmosphere. Somebody shout, my generation shall be blessed. My children shall be blessed. Their children shall be blessed. And their children shall be blessed. The blessing of the Lord maketh us rich and it adds no sorrow. No sorrow. No sorrow. But it's our responsibility to work the word. It's our responsibility to work the word. You got to work the word. You got to work the word. You got to work the word. And you got to come to the place where you're not running from it, but you got to run to it. Yeah. Glory to God. First Peter, the fifth chapter, the eighth verse, it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to see who, who, who can he snatch the word from. He knows who's paying attention. He knows whose mind is on the other side of town, even when they're in their house saying that they're virtually watching the service, even while they're in the church, thinking about what they're going to do after they're leaving this place. He knows where you're thinking because he knows that if he can get to you, he will begin to devour you. So we got to understand that we must come to the place of recognizing Satan's methods. We taught on this some time ago, but you got to recognize this. And you got to know who he is and how to pounce. And we're like nothing better to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. Uh-oh. Keep your guard up. <laughs> the Living Bible says, be careful. Watch out for attacks from Satan, your great enemy. He prowls around like a hungry, roaring lion looking for some victim to tear apart. Wow. So, so all of these things is shut, it's letting us know that the enemy's job is to, to kill, to kill, still, to still kill and to destroy. And we got to come to the place that we will not give in place because we know what God has spoken. We know what God has said in his word. And because I know what God has spoken and said in his words, when the offenses come, when the enemy comes to lay tracks or, or, or traps, I am able to overcome in every area. Hallelujah. 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 Go to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, the 11th verse. I want you to see yourself in this. But I want you to see yourself that God wants to get you to the place where you get unexpected in. What are you expecting? I expect to come out, to go to the next level. I expect that God is not done with me just right in this place. Hey, hey, there's some things that God wants to do mightily in my life, mightily in your life. Don't get comfortable. I said, don't get comfortable. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, the 11th verse, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts. And did he not say, Great peace have they which love thy law? Remember the first one that we talked about? Now he says, he says, Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. To give you what now? <laughs> to give you an expected end. Now jump over to Psalms number 35. Stanza number 27. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It says, let them shout for joy. Hurry up and get there. 
let him shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually. Wow, what does the word continually mean? Keep it going. Keep it going all the time. Keep it going all the time. Keep it going all the time. Let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So even if things are not going the way they should be going, we should continue to keep the word going forth in our mouth. Everything that God has already spoken, because we are people of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight, which means that we should not get caught up into everything that we're seeing. Just because you're sinned in one way, it is an attack of the enemy to make you think that God is not working on your behalf. God is at work on your behalf. God wants to work your situation out. God wants to let, let it be known that it doesn't matter how big it is. He's a miracle worker. He's a way maker. I don't know about you, but I mean, every time God gives me an assignment, he always tells me, I don't care how much money you got in your pocket, it's never enough to complete and do my work. I have to trust him. I have to lean on him. I have to look to him. Are y'all with me? But one thing for sure is I know that he is with me. Somebody shout, I know that you're with me, God. Say it again, I know that you're with me, God. Regardless of what I'm going through right now, I know you are with me. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let's go over to Proverbs 18, chapter 19, verse, because I want to go back to this offense thing, because the reality is when people get offended, they get over into a bad place. When people get offended, you know, they lose and break fellowship. When people get offended, they cannot deal with their offender. Ah, huh, yeah, can't even be in their presence. Remember one time or two, you, you've made a big fellowship and you can connect with folk, but then all of a sudden, you can't be there with them. You got to go the opposite way. They're on that side of the church, you're on this side of the church. You're making sure that you get to that door before they even get to that door. You're only going to walk in the parking lot with them because you don't want to deal with them based on something that they might have done to you. Am I talking to anybody today? And it's not just the church. It could be on your job. See, y'all can be sanctified in, in the church, but when you're at work, you know, you are totally different. Because you're dealing with a different set of people. Huh? They don't care about you. They just want the work done. Huh? They don't care how you get it. They just make, make sure that you hit deadlines. And if you're slacking, you know, they'll tell you in a minute, okay, we need to get this done, and we need to get it done now. And sometimes... We don't like the way they talk to us. Even in the church sometimes, you don't like the way we talk to you. Amen. When there is a directive, sometimes there is an urgency to get things taken care of. It's not that, you know, we're disrespecting you. It's like, okay, let's get it done because we need to make sure that if we don't get, if we, if we can hit the dates that we need to hit, it's going to be a blessing to many people's lives. So over in Proverbs, the 18th chapter, the 19th verse, is something happened when people get offended. And I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Anybody ever been offended? <laughs> I thought I would just ask a question. Amen. So let's look at this because notice when you got offended, this is what happened. In verse number 19, it says, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. I'll just give you the description. Have anybody ever been to a jail, a prison, or anywhere, and you can see how, how the bars are so strong? That's exactly what it's talking about. So that means that if you get over into a place and you don't judge that thing, it will cause you to put a wall up in front of you that you don't want to deal with absolutely nobody because you just don't like the way they handle you. And sometimes people are not even uh, offended by the way people are being handled. They kind of get in on other people's stuff. They don't like the way people are being handled. You know, the Lord always told me to stay in your own lane and mind your own business. Stop trying to fight other folks' battles because you're going to get in trouble. Oh, I'm preaching up here if y'all don't even say amen. So a major stumbling block in the body of Christ is offense. And as soon as believers get offended, their disposition changes instantly. An offended believer displays contention, not kindness. 
regardless of who was, who has defended him, offended him, whether it was a minister, a fellow believer, someone outside of the local church, uh, there are bars that rise, and he instantly, or she instantly, exhibit a contentious disposition to those about him. Amen. Of my 23 years of pastoring, boy, have I seen some people be offended. And I mean, be some time where, you know, you check them on some things. It's not that, you know, you're trying to, you know, to control them, but this is what God is telling us to do. And all of a sudden, it's, oh, pastor, he's controlling. Oh, pastor, he likes to micromanage. Oh, pastor, I, you know, I can't deal with all of that because it's just too much. Pastor, pa I've had so many people to tell me the like terminology of how people view me as I lead the church. Come on, don't be quiet. Amen. But the reality is this, don't get in a place where you get to a place of being in the seat of the scornful, where you want people to think like you based on how you feel about individuals. I'm talking about me now. So the reality is you got a responsibility to make sure that you check yourself even if an offense challenges you. The Bible says that, you know, in this life, you will have offenses. It didn't say offense. It said offenses. So that means that there's plural, meaning that until you go on to be with the Lord, you're going to be challenged. Tell your neighbor, until you go on to be with the Lord, you will be challenged. Tell them again, until you go on to be with the Lord, you will be challenged. Let's jump right quickly to Luke, the 17th chapter, the first verse. Quickly. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke, the 17th chapter, the first verse. Are you there? He says, then he said unto the disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses whoop, will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hung, were hang about the, his neck and he cast into the sea, then that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Wow. Forgive him. So we know over in Mark, it teaches us that, you know, we can't ask God to forgive us if we're not able to what? To give others. We also know that the scripture says that, you know, in a given day, you are to forgive a person how many times? <laughs> 70 times 7, which is 490 times. Can a person get under your skin, offend you to that place that you can't just let, come on, y'all, it's got to be a serious, they need to be locked up, I mean, and put away if they can get under your skin all that time. Our job is to walk in love. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but to love. Nothing but what now? Love. Nothing but to love him. And as we owe nobody nothing but love, that means that we should be quick to forgive others even when we've been done wrong. You know, I'm so glad that, you know, Donna and I have been married 32 years. And, uh. The Holy Spirit brought this to me this morning, honey. I know you're going to laugh when I say this because, you know, when I come home, I kind of lay it out on the table what happened in a given day. <laughs> and she said, well, maybe, um, did you, are you, are you, maybe they didn't mean it that way. I said, well, they, well you say that, but I'm telling you what I experienced. <laughs> and a husband talk to your wife like that, you know, you know maybe only on one. So, you know, and, you know, she has this counseling thing and she's real good at it, you know, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 I, this, this is not... Counseling time. This is time for you to understand how I feel. And I'm so glad I have a helper in this regard. I'm speaking to couples right now. Men, allow the women in your life, allow the anointing on the women in your life to help you be better. And women, when the husbands do come, allow them to just put it on the table. Don't shut the brothers down right away. Are y'all with me? 
So, I mean, you know, there are times when I said, well, you know, I, I said, you know, I had this scenario, da 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 And she said, well, honey, did, did are you, are you, she always say, you know, did you hear them correctly? And I'm like, hear them correctly? I saw them. <laughs> I know how they're acting. And the first thing I'm saying, you weren't there, you don't even know, but you're trying to tell me how I need to conduct myself. And I started thinking about this, and I really applaud you for this, honey, because one of the things that I will say is it keeps me balanced in that I need to always examine my actions just as well. Huh? And see what she was trying to tell me. See, I know you. Everybody else don't know you like I know you. So where you think that you're okay, but guess what? There are some things that you have to be accountable for. Am I helping anybody? There are things that you have to be accountable for. Guess what? You can expect to get one end of action when you're not judging your own actions. But even if someone offends you, you still got a responsibility to walk in love. And if they, forg- if they repent, forgive them. I said again, if they repent, forgive them. Pastor, what if it was bad? Forgive them. What if it was something that was just really not good? Forgive them. Now, by faith, we're going to believe that you'll be strengthened as you go on, but it's a by faith walk. And you've got to learn how to move in faith in order to get your blessing. God is trying to get you your stuff. And you cannot get the stuff, God, if you're going to have all this odd and all this bitterness and all this strife on the inside of you. I'll say it one more time. You got real quiet. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Mark the fourth chapter. Amen. Come on quickly. Mark the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mark the fourth chapter, starting with verse number 14. It says, the sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. And so endure but a time. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Immediately they are offended. When does offense come? After persecution and affliction? For the word's sake. So that means that every time you hear the word, the enemy is going to come immediately. I said the enemy is going to come immediately to take what you have deposited on the inside of you. But your job is to what? To make sure you get the word in you that you won't what? Sin against it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? You got to make sure that you're getting the word in you. You're depositing it in your spirit, not so much in your head. Why? Because in your head, you can forget. But in your heart, the word is hidden in your heart. The enemy is always going to come and suggest things to where? To your emotions, your mind, will, and emotion. But he cannot, what, protrude into what? The spirit of man. Are y'all with me? Why? Because that's how God speaks. That's where, the, that's where God speaks to us. Amen. So our job is to make sure that we get the word in. Get the word in. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And that means as, as much as we get the word in us, we got to come to the place that we need to guard the word. Amen? See, the heart is the core of our being, and the Bible sets high importance on keeping our hearts guarded from all kind of craziness from the devil. Proverbs, the fourth chapter, starting with verse number 20. Come on, just stay with me. Just teaching. Amen. If we're going to rebuild the church, if we're going to restore biblical values, you got to get the word in you. Amen. You got to know what to do in the time of trouble. Amen. What to do in the time of trouble. You got to guard your heart 
with the word. Everything that I just preached on this morning, it, did you get it in your heart? Did you get it in your heart? Because if you didn't get it in your heart, the enemy's going to come to do what? To what now? To steal it. Amen. So if you are so uh, engulfed with the word, that means that right now you're going to be writing in your notes, I got to get this in me. Huh? I got to get this in me. Or otherwise, the, the enemy is going to come and, and take from me. And I want you to know that across many congregations this morning, I don't care how many people are in churches, guess what the enemy is doing? He's waiting on that opportunity to devour. Ah, he's waiting what now? He's waiting on an opportunity to devour. He's wanting an opportunity that he can come at you and just really uh, wreak havoc in your life, right? So while you are, you know, if you ain't paying attention to uh, his, 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 his movement and the things that he's doing as for his strategies, he will get your stuff. Amen? Amen. 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 Let me have this. See, he's sitting on the front row. I'm doing this for a reason, not to embarrass him. But that's just how the enemy comes. If the word is not in you, he can take it from you. But his responsibility is to hold on to that which have been given unto him. I'm teaching up here, y'all. So I'm going to come at him again. And this time, when I walk up close to him, he's going to hold on to this Bible. Amen. Y'all ready? So everybody said, get ready, Robert. This time, hold it, guard it. Make sure you don't let go. Make sure you don't let the word drop to the floor. I'm trying to teach y'all something. Don't let the word drop. To, now, guess what? He's a strong man, but I'm strong too. And I'm going to, I ain't going to tell you Bible. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> He's an like, oh, army guy. Look at him. I feel the muscle. I feel the muscles popping up out of the shirt. But guess what? The enemy is still going to come at you. Notice, it doesn't, have I stopped? The enemy is not going to stop. He's going to keep coming at you. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's going to rock you and roll you and everything. Now, his wife is sitting over there, but guess what? She's like, I'm not going to let you have that word now. Do you get what I'm saying? Everybody say immediately. He comes to steal the word that has been planted in your heart. Why? Because he knows that if you get the word planted in you, you have a, a, an opportunity to build your faith and starve your doubts concerning any issue that you are dealing with in your life. Oh, wait a minute. So you're telling me that the word will change my circumstance and my situation? They didn't say nothing over here. I'm going to go back. I, so the world would change my circumstances and situation. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. If I can keep that word in me. Even if somebody offend me and I got the word in me, I can overcome. I'm going to try these people over here say, tell them to get ready. Amen. So over here, come on now, if I got the word on the inside of me, it doesn't matter what goes on in my life, I win. Yeah. 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 And not only that, it doesn't matter who tried to offend me, I can always walk in love. Yeah. Why? Because I got the word of God in my heart. Yeah. Not in my head. Not in my, my memory brain, but it's in my heart. Now, this is the catch here. Why, why, why is the enemy coming? Because he knows that there is a part of your heart that ain't holy. Huh? And if he can tap into that part of your heart, then that means he can have an entrance to get you to a place where anything and everything can offend you. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say it again, hallelujah. hallelujah. Proverbs 4, chapter the 20th verse, starting with the, the, the 20th verse, it says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. 
keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and help to all of their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Verse number 24 says, put away from thee a forward mouth and a perverse lips. Put far from thee, let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder thy paths of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. You got a responsibility. I say you got a responsibility. That responsibility is to guard your heart. Are y'all with me? Psalms number 119, stanza number 11. It says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against it. Glory to God. Now, now I'm asking you right now, don't you think that just because you're born again and say that, some, that there's nothing wrong with your heart. You, know, you ever hear people say, oh, they all right. They got a good heart. <laughs> Do you overlook? Oh, yeah, they got a good heart. But something is motivating them to do something not so good. Turn to Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, the 9th verse. Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get this out. Amen. I just want to get to this point. Amen. Woo, Jeremiah, the 17th chapter, verse number 9. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So if the heart has got that part in it, what part do you think the enemy is trying to get to? That part. <laughs> Somebody shout, I got the love of Jesus deep down in my heart. You do, but there's some other things that are, that's on the other side of that heart. And that's why you got to guard yourself to make sure you're not allowing an entrance to come in and make good, make bad of a, of, a, of a good thing that could happen in your life. Amen? Now, James, the third chapter, the 16th verse, I got two more scriptures I'm going to give to you, and I'm going to close this. It says, uh, hallelujah, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. What? Every evil work. And where is that confusion coming from? Suggest the thought of the enemy. If he can get it in your heart, bitterness gets there. And when get bitterness gets there, it's almost like there are bars are being built up that you know can't nobody get to you because you've been offended. Am I making sense here? Yeah. Praise God. So listen, I want to share this, share this with you as I close. Everybody remember Solomon. Remember Solomon was, he was, he was great wisdom, great understanding, Wrote so many uh, books of the Bible. In the beginning, he had it like that. But scripture says, uh-oh, in 1 Kings, the 11th chapter, the first to the fourth verse, I want to read this and I'm closing. It says, but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, Women of the Moabites, the Amorites, the Edomites, the Zadians, and the Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart from their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, and his wife turned away his heart. This is good. How did he start out so well? Tell your neighbor, we start out one way, but we got to finish strong. This is so good because I'm telling you, verse number four, it says, For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart from other, after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David the father. You can have good intentions, 
But you got to do something. If you see where there's offense that is encroaching upon you, nip it in the bud. Get rid of it. Because the longer it stays around, you become like those bars. Nobody can get to you, and you get farther away. And when you start seeing people moving farther away from you and farther away from you, you ask the extra yourself, did I offend you or did something? Sometimes they will take a conversation and sometimes they won't. But you got to know that you've examined yourself to make sure that you're doing the right thing as far as walking in love with the people of God. Did y'all get anything this morning? Yeah. Come on, musicians. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, lift up your hands right quickly. You're going to make some confessions. Say, Father God, thank you for helping me to realize I've got to do better. I will purpose in my heart to guard it with all diligence because I realize I must get the word in me every day. And not only that, I got to be doers of the word. I believe right now, Father, that you are a loving and forgiving God. And just as you forgive those have sinned against you, it is my responsibility right now to let go of the past and make sure that I can move forward into the wealthy place that you have for me. So right now, I lay myself before you. Come on, look at those hands. This is an opportunity for you right now. Wherever, whatever, whenever, whoever offended you, just drop it right now. And say, God, you know right now, I want to be done. I got to move forward. Family members, let them go. Brothers and sisters, let them go. Mothers and fathers, let them go. Release them so that you can move forward in the place that God would have you to move forward in. Church members, let it go. Settle it right now. I say settle it now. This is your opportunity. God's going to wipe it. He's wiping it clean. Clean slate. Come on. Ah, glory to God. Okay, so everybody repeat after me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I now rekindle my relationship with you. 1 John 1, 9 teaches us that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive and cleanse us from all unrighteous. Clean me up right now. Let that be healing in this place, y'all. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. So go ahead and say, Father God, Father God I, repent. I repent. I reaffirm, I reaffirm that, Jesus that Jesus is Lord of my life and I will get my expected end. Right now, God, Lord, I believe. Say it again, Lord, I believe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stand on your feet. Lord, I believe. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen.
If you're here right now, if you never confessed Jesus, Lord and Savior of your life, this is an opportunity for you to come forth and receive him. Glory to God. We're going to ask that no one is moving except for those who are instructed to move. Just let them sit there right quickly and just at the back right until we finish. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. If you're not confess Jesus Lord and Savior of your life, this is an opportunity for you to, to make him Lord. You know, it's one thing to die and go on to live life in heaven with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, but it's another thing to die and spend eternity with Satan and his cohorts. Not a good feeling at all. We don't want you to have uh, make a decision based on the fact that you are getting born again so that you can have a life for sure with, with heaven. We want you to get born again so that you can tap into the goodness of our Father while you're in the earth. And then as you go on to be with him, it could be attenuation of great things. So if you're not born again, you need to, to make that decision with the Lord. Why don't you lift up your hand, raise your hand, and we can pray with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there anybody? We've already done a rekindled relationship. If you're here and not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is an opportunity again for you to receive this morning. Amen. The empowerment gift that will help you to get where you need to be and do the great exploits that God would have you. Last but not least, if you're here, amen. And you need a church home, this is a great place for you to be. Amen. So if there's anyone that would like to make a God for International Ministry your church home, this is an opportunity for you to come and connect with this local church. Hallelujah. Is there anybody? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Blessed are the little ones that come. Amen. Daddy comes with them in Jesus' name. Amen. Stretch your hand toward them. Amen. Father, we say right now that even as they come, Lord God, we pray that their needs are met as they go to the prayer room, Lord God. And we pray right now that the prayer room workers, Lord God, will be sensitive to minister their needs, Lord God, so that they will get what they are coming for. In the master's name of Jesus, we give you the glory, honor, and praise. Let's shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to take you out there to, uh, the, amen. Y'all give a God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Were you blessed this morning by the word? Okay, you may be seated. It's opportunity for prosperity. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to read right quickly um, Malachi, the third chapter. Glory to God. Malachi, the third chapter, starting with, hallelujah, that's my Malachi, six verse. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, we, ye have gone away from mine ordinance and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall ye return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye rob me. But you say, wherein have you robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You curse with the curse, and ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. This morning, this is a great opportunity for you to give, amen. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm trying to see what's my little cue card. Amen. But it's somewhere. Amen. But anyway, you can give uh, by using your mobile app. Register your device at Agape International Ministry 30253. McDonald Ministries 30253. You can text GIVE 770-628-5854. Or you can give online www.agapeintlmin.org. Or you can mail it in by mailing to P.O. Box. 1152 McDonough, Georgia, 30253. And if you got cash or checks, you can use cash or checks this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Notice that you know God is going to take care of us as we are taking care of him. Amen. Are y'all ready to give? Uh, are you ready to give? Praise God. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless your name right now for we are now about to receive uh, the tithes and the offerings, oh God. Bless the gift. Bless the givers, Lord God. We pray right now that as they give, Lord God, uh, you will continue to meet their need, oh God, and you will continue to supply everything that you promised them that you would supply. Father, we thank you right now that as they give, Lord God, it will meet every need of the church, Lord God, and it will cause us to uh, move forward in doing those things that we're supposed to be doing of the assignment you've given us. And not only that, God, but men, women, boys, and girls will be saved. The gospel, the good news will be preached in out throughout the whole world. So we bless you and we glorify you for this opportunity to give in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may now receive uh, the offerings, the tithes and offerings. At this particular time, we will now turn our attention to the screens. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome to Agape International Ministries. Agape is a non-denominational ministry whose purpose is to reach the lost, mature the body, and spread the love of Jesus Christ. The ministry's vision is guided by four biblical core values based on the ministry of Jesus. Evangelism, edification, equipping, and encouragement. Our foundational scripture can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, which states, And now abideth faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Join us right here at 4040 Jonesboro Road, Hampton, Georgia, every Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. for our morning worship service, and each Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. for our virtual small groups. 2022 has been declared the year of rebuilding the church, restoring biblical values, and reviving the people. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10 states, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Let us come together and see what powerful things God will do through his people and in his church. Join us from 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday for a powerful jumpstart to your day on the Morning Glory Prayer Conference Call. The number is area code 716-427-1338 and the access code is 476-389-POUND. It is with great pleasure that the announcement of the CD project of Pastor Lucius McDowell, entitled Through Him, is finally finished. This project, consisting of nine inspirational songs, echoes the life of prayer, praise and worship, lived by Pastor Lucius. Each song has been composed to comfort, inspire, encourage, and edify all generations. The project was designed to meet and reach listening audiences with the powerful lyric knitted together with melodious rhythms. From praise and worship to contemporary Christian music, Through Him is designed to bless you. CDs are available to purchase today. On this Memorial Weekend, we honor and celebrate the life of all U.S. soldiers, sailors, airmen, airwomen, and Marines who have died while serving in the United States Armed Forces. Starting this summer, 2022, join us in the house for a power-packed hour of corporate prayer beginning Wednesday, June 1st at 7 p.m. And let's band together declaring the Word of God over the nation, the body of Christ, and our ministry. Come expecting God to move 
in the midst of his people. Agape Virtual Small Groups resumes on Wednesday, June 8th at 7 p.m. with the three levels of discipleship. Yeah. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. John 8, 31. This is a wonderful time to reach out to those outside of Agape and invite them to join us as we are connecting with God, connecting with church, and connecting with community on our virtual platform. If you would like to join us, call our church office at 770-603-2211 and you will be assigned to a group. On Sunday, June 19th, join us as we celebrate the Ministry of Fatherhood. Be sure to invite your family and friends as we recognize and honor all the fathers in the house on Father's Day during our morning worship service. On Friday, June 24th at 7 p.m., Pastor Lucius and Donna McDowell and the Marriage Maintenance Ministry invites you to our next Married Couples event. Join us for a weekend intensive, rebuilding, rebooting, and recharging marriages. Come with your spouse and invite other married couples as we will hear from national marriage experts, have fun, food, and fellowship. If you plan to attend, please sign up at the Greeters Counter. On Sunday, June 25th, all Agape members are asked to join us as May I Pray For You campaign continues. This powerful event will take place on the... May I Pray For You is a non-confrontational method of soul winning that allows people to voluntarily come to us for prayer, salvation, and rededication. This is a church-wide event, so we are looking for all Agape ministers, deacons, leaders, youth, children, and lay members of all generations to come out and take the square for the glory of God. Join us in covering pastors Lucius and Donna McDowell with your prayers love and support as they travel to Kigali, Africa on July 18th through July 26th to minister at the Kingdom Explosion Conference and at local churches throughout Kigali. If you have responded to any altar call information, we want to hear from you. Please contact the church office at 770-603-2211 to inform us of your decision and an assigned minister will be standing by to pray with you. Please be reminded that Agape is endeavoring to be a safe place for worship. To adhere to COVID-19 regulations, we ask that everyone comply with wearing a mask and practice social distancing while in the building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, listen, we just like to uh, reiterate some things in that announcement. Bring the lights up. Uh, on yesterday, we were able to do our May I Pray For You event. We were able to do over 6,000 prayer requests. In the city of Lovejoy and in McDonough, Georgia. And we're asking all of our members, you know, starting was it June, June, the 20th, June 25th, sign up because, you know, it was a lot of people we met out there and a lot of people who have definitely some serious needs that they they need prayer over. Amen. And not only that, people need a church home. Amen. And we need some saints out there who know the power of prayer to get these things done. Amen. Don't forget about our marriage intensive. It's going to be a very... Amen. How many married for we got in here? Tan, you need to take start taking notes right quickly. Amen. Okay. So listen, we want to make sure that, you know, we can... um, really create these moments for our marriage maintenance because we have a marriage maintenance department and they've been very faithful, diligently making sure that they provide the services that are needed to help strengthen your marriage. This intensive will be a a Friday night, which is a little different. We're going to have food. We'll have fun. We'll have fellowship and we'll have experts, uh, national experts that will be able to sit and really deal with marriages. All marriages need to be worked on. Are y'all with me? Spark plugs change, oil change, all of those things, it needs to be done. So we're asking every married couple to make sure that you sign up today because we're going to lay it out for you. We're going to lay it out for you. And we're going to make sure that, you know, from this point on, that, you know, 
we'll have all the necessary tools that are needed so that we can take it on to the next level. Amen. Charles and uh, Tan uh, Moore, they are the, the people that are in charge of it, and we'll make sure that, you know, they'll continue doing what they do with the uh, small group, but at the same token, it's under the marriage maintenance piece, so they'll be working real hard with us to make it work. Tan has already got her head going with, with, <laughs> with things that we will have to have done. How many married couples we have in here today? Amen. Okay. Get to that information booth and woo, and sign up. Amen. Now, I'm telling you, this is one you're not going to want to miss because, you know, we usually would do our, um, our event uh, in February, but because of the pandemic, not been able to do too much of anything. But I'm telling you, this is going to be a great, great start for them. Amen. We're doing a massive rebuild through the whole church, and we're looking at all of our ministries to see what we need to do to even get them jump starts so we can get people in. You know, we got folk building houses on both sides of this church. And I don't know if y'all know this, but the property value of these houses, they are 500000 and up. And that means we got a harvest of souls that we got to reach. Amen. And I don't know if you remember when we first built our church, that was when the economic downturn went. And there was no building at all. And now the buildings are coming up. The people are coming. And we're going to make sure that, you know, we'll be able to reach them. Amen. That was something else I needed to say. Um, Rwanda trip. Amen. Pastor Dunn and I have been invited to uh, be in Rwanda, Africa. Amen. <laughs> Now, th this is going to be a, the good part about it. As we go there, we go to be a blessing to them. Amen. Amen. We need your prayers, your love, and your support. You know, have a God move on you to do whatever. Praise God. But we are going. Amen. And uh, we've been given, you know, some directives, and we believe that this is an opportunity again to do international ministries. And I, I just, I'm excited because God keep doing great things. Amen. I also want to let you know that on June the 10th, I will be on TV 57. Tune in. Amen. Amen. So with all of these things going on, we want to make sure that we cover this stuff in prayer to make sure that we get what we need to be concerned. The building project, I need the church praying because we got to get moving on the other side. Amen. And I believe that it's long and overdue, and I want it done before the month of June is over with so that we can do what we want to do in our church, in Jesus' name. Stand on your feet, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Were you blessed this morning? Yes. Are you going to work the word this morning? Yes. Amen. Look to your neighbor right quick and say, hey, neighbor. Yes. God love you. Yes. Pastor love you. Yes. Pastor Donna love you. Yes. I love you also. Yes. And neighbor, yes. don't forget. Yes. Great peace. Have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So neighbor, I'm saying to you now, hide the word in your heart that you will not sin against it. Have a wonderful weekend. Be blessed in Jesus' name. You are dismissed. Amen.